This whole project started with this test piece. Although it's not fully painted, I'm really not that happy with the aesthetic. There's too much going on with the base, 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 base. And there's far too much rubble on each of these two floors. I thought I'd have a look at what Games Workshop have to offer, and I came across these, but I absolutely balked at the price tag. I also found this, which I thought was pretty f cool, but again... Challenge accepted. Now I still regard myself as a complete novice, but can I build an incursion sized board for less than £82.50? And it's all going to start with these really simple templates. These are A4 size templates, and for our American friends, that's 210 by 297 millimeters. But I'm just messing. There's 210 by 297 millimeters. All right, all right, all right. There's 8.3 knuckles by 11.7 knuckles. I'll leave a link in the description to these templates, both in JPEG and in PDF format. All you need to do is print them at 100% scale and you will be perfectly fine. But as it is in America, with everything being bigger, some of you might need to go to a copy shop. I've just glued them to the same size sheets of chipboard. It's A4, I've already done that joke. But I'm slightly cautious that some of them might be a little bit thin in areas. So I kept all of the offcuts, and all I'm gonna do is glue a thin strip to the top of some of the templates where it's a little bit thin, just to reinforce it, because I don't want it to become flimsy or tear or break or anything like that. This is going to be my weapon of choice. 1200 by 600, oh, I'm, I'm recording. Amazon wrapping. Thank you. These are artist wooden panels. We'll come back to these later, but for now, I really need to start attacking some of this XPS foam, and I'm cutting it down to 83 millimeter strips. And again, when we go further into the video, I'll show you where I got that measurement from. I then half the depth of these strips, so instead of 10 mil, they were five mil thick. I also cut some 10 mil by 10 mil lengths. And after a little bit of prep time, I had all the building blocks that I needed to start turning some of these templates into some actual buildings. You know what to do here, right? You pin the template to the foam and then cut it out with a sharp knife. I also cut out some more five mil sheets so we can use these as floors as we build more floors. And I cut out a few of these supports because the first thing I want to try and do is replicate the building we saw earlier. And before I forget, this is where we got the 83 millimeter measurement from. So it's based on Games Workshop's own measurements, as is the door, but I did make the windows a little bit bigger. Using some Gorilla wood glue, I'm just gonna glue everything together just like this, with the addition of adding some of those sheets that we're gonna use as flooring. As I'm building it, I'm pinning it all together, and this is of course to allow it to stay structurally sound while the glue cures. With the flooring, I just need to cut out a couple of notches just so that it fits snugly against the 10 by 10 mil lengths.
Then we can attach the two sides and it'll look like this. It was half one in the morning at this point, so my intention was to let this dry and go to bed. But I couldn't stop working. And the next day, this is what it looked like. With these templates, there's also this piece of paper. This is to show you where you can align either buttressing or columns. And you will have noticed that the center ones are wider than the outer ones. This allows us to create the illusion of either keystones or corner blocks, whatever you want to call them, and use as many different types of buttresses as our little hearts see fit. The outer ones measure 5mm by 5mm, the inner 10 by 10 and all you have to do is line this piece of paper up with the building and it shows you exactly where you need to glue them. Then it's just a case of rinse and repeat until you've added each piece and it'll look like this. It's dead easy right? But can we push this further just using these very simple templates? This is the building that we've been building, but I've ripped off the third wall because I want to incorporate that into some rubble. I think this one's my favorite because it uses my favorite type of buttress. And yes, I am the kind of man that has a favorite buttress. And creating this layered wall effect was really simple. as was making this big fella. Now the blue columns, they're cake columns. They only cost me £3.49, so I'm still well within the budget. And this piece is the back end of that building. This was built from the fanciest of the templates, but this actually inspired something altogether much more grandiose. It turned into a bit of a monster of a futuristic 40k, broken down, apocalyptic city rubble cathedral. Do you remember these? Well, here's what 927 individually cut and laid foam bricks looks like now. This is an A1 size board. To save argument, it's 23.4 by 33.1 inches, so it is a little bit bigger than a skirmish board. But it was under 20 quid, and I didn't have to do any woodwork at all. And for those who don't know, A size paper has a fractal ratio of 1.414, which means I can take an A4 piece of paper, do this. That rule is too small, dumbass. And all I have to do is then scale this up to a one. And we shouldn't forget that these boards are meant to be hung on a wall. And crafting like this is an art form all on its own. We should never be afraid of showing it off and we certainly shouldn't be hiding it behind something else. Let's get down to the brass tacks of it. The two artist boards cost me £37.36p. I haven't included the hanging price because, well, that's up to you. You don't need to hang them on a wall if you don't want to. The two foam sheets of XPS cost me a total of £9.58 and I used all of it. The four cake columns cost me £3.49 and the cork that I used for the main rows on the boards cost me £11. That's a grand total of £61.43. So I saved myself 20 quid compared to the two models that we looked at on Games Workshop and it's time for a beer. I have overbuilt all of these buildings and I've kind of done it on purpose. I wasn't sure how much room they were really going to take up on the board. Doing it this way round allows me now to carve them up. Now this process was a hell of a lot of fun. A bit painstaking but a lot of fun and I think you'll agree they turned out pretty good. But what did I actually get for my £61.43? pence? Well firstly, we've got all of these ruins. But the goal was to build an incursion-sized gaming board. And I think 
was pretty much a success. But hold on a second. We actually ended up with two incursion size gaming boards and terrain to fill them all. And if I decided to make two more of these boards using the same layout, I'd have a 6x4. But I'd actually have two 6x4 gaming boards. But that's not quite the full story. We can remove one of these boards, and wouldn't you look at that? We've got a skirmish size city board all ready for kill team. All that I've got to do now.